13,030 pounds, previously known as the 3X. This is now just the open range 427 BHS here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is a wide body, deep slide, carpetless deep slide at that, pet friendly beast mode of a bath and a half outside kitchen, zero degree rated bunkhouse. Whew, that is a lot of big time good qualities all wrapped up into one rig. This is definitely a destination model, but it does have a little bit of travel functionality. Of course, we can get to, well, really both bathrooms. You can get to your main bathroom uh, right here from the steps where I'm at. You can get to your half bath from outside. Now, you see you've got these uh, rocking chairs here. If you position them back to back, like I've done right here, and it helps if you have long legs like mine, or skinny legs where you could slide your leg through, you can just step over that thing, get over here, and you will notice you can get to the freezer, and you can get to half of the refrigerator, but half of the fridge is really all of the fridge. You can open this a tiny, tiny bit to help, but there's nothing that blocks you from reaching around the corner to get to something. So if you plan ahead, if you really say, okay, I need my traveling food and drinks here so that we can stop at a rest stop, I can make food inside and I can take like a sandwich out to the kids at a picnic table, it could be travel stop functional. Now you could, if you really wanted to, you could get in here and you see how I have that one dining table still in place? You do have a functional dinette in transit if you don't mind the kids crawling across the furniture. If, uh, or yourselves, I suppose, you know, take your shoes off, kids, hands and knees crawl, get over there, I'm gonna throw you a sandwich, you know? <laughs> kind of like if you go to Benihana, you know? The, the guy, he's cooking a shrimp, he flips it up with his little paddle and you try to catch it in your mouth. I always get hit in the face, every time. Now there is a lot for me to cover on this one. And I can't cover every single thing, but there's some main points I want to hit, and I'm going to kind of work my way from the top down here so I don't miss anything. You might note that up top here on the upper right, you see that uh, roof vent fan. It's one of the larger vent fans to give you better airflow, and there is a wall control switch for that thing, so you don't have to be, you know, like poking at it with a broomstick to get it to work. Also, what you don't see is the air conditioner. And if you don't see the square, then you won't hear the air, because this has a much quieter whisper ducted centralized air system, and our main AC is a standard 15,000 BTU. Now we will typically add the optional bedroom second centralized AC to our open range big fifth wheels as well. We'll see that when we get up to the bedroom area. But since they didn't have to deal with the air conditioner, they could put a larger good looking uh, light fixture up top here. Now as we come down, I want to mention that there's different fabric color decors, there's different seating arrangements, so the one that we're looking at today could be different from the one that's in stock or you might have seen somewhere. This is simply how we've found the most popularity out of these. And one of those things is this giant optional like Super U lounge here that occupies the entire Super Slide. And it really draws attention to a couple uh, really, well, first of all, industry exclusive feature. How about the fact that nobody else in the industry has a carpetless floor flush super slide like this. Now, not only is that carpetless, not only is this completely ventless in the flooring so that it's easy to clean, it's pet friendly. It's just, it's better for kids. You don't have to deal with like Skittles and paper clips going down those heat vents. But the fact that they also have a six inch deeper super slide and that in conjunction with a four inch wider body means this thing has uh, basically nearly a foot more living space at your destination as compared to traditional size slides and bodies. Not only is the slide deeper, not only is the body wider, but the slide is also six inches taller. That is a seven foot tall slide out. So that if you are a big goofball like me, or even if you're not a goofball, but you're big like me, I mean, you could almost do jumping jacks in this thing. It is extremely large and spacious. And that allows for the inclusion of full overhead storage while still having full uh, windows wrap around the entirety of the slide out right there. You don't have to choose do you get storage or windows. The deeper, taller slide means we get storage and windows. And this is definitely one of those cases I think people agree that and is better than or. But what's kind of cool is those overhead cabinets, you don't have to like fight with them to get in and out of them. Because as you see, those big deep overhead cabinets, they have 
hidden hinges to make them look good, but they also have struts to keep them held open, so you don't have to do that maneuver where you juggle it open with your head. Now, you would normally have a traditional sofa dinette setup down here, and you can see, as I have it set up currently, with this mega super lounge, whatever you want to call it, um, there is, you know, a sofa and dinette arrangement sort of in play. So you can use it very traditionally, but what is so nice about this feature right here is it's like a Swiss Army sofa. There's almost nothing it can't do. So first, let's pull those tables out and take a look at this. Now, what's kind of cool, when you do remove those tables, the fact that you have that carpetless floor flush slide, this is where that deeper slide out really comes into play because suddenly the slide becomes an extension of your living space. Instead of having to kind of walk around it, you can literally walk through the slide and access the RV. It only serves to make the whole thing look and feel even larger than it actually is. So I had that dinette table there and then it vanished and you might have kind of wondered where the table and the post went. One of the cool things about this uh, super lounge design is that both ends of this Mega U Lounge can hold their respective tabletops and their little storage posts. Or you could choose to put them somewhere else and use those as generic storage drawers. There's really no limitation to how you could or couldn't use those things. But what about mealtime? Well, you pop that little table out, and like I said, we can have ourselves a little dinette arrangement. But one of the other really cool things about the Super Lounge feature that we've added here at Halo RV is the fact that you can actually sit and feed the entire family all at one time, all in one spot. So it's not like you have to have one kid here, one kid there, or we take shifts where the kids eat now and then mom and dad eat later. If you are interested in sitting down and having a whole family meal, then this is definitely a feature and a floor plan that would suit you. So we're in a big bunkhouse that just has a ton of sleeping space, but one of the things that's kind of cool here is if you want to, um, I have these cushions flipped down. They just basically kind of Velcro onto this little bar in the back to stay in place, which is nice so that you're not constantly like rearranging cushions. They're stuck in place. They're not going to go wandering around. But if you want to, you could easily just pull those Velcro straps and you could have yourself a two adult length sleeping space right here. But what's neat is <laughs> there's other ways that you can use this thing for sleeping guests. Or you could simply roll those cushions over. If you notice, you don't have to take those cushions off. You can simply roll them down like I did, and you can use this middle area here, which is perfectly fitted to do something like throw an air mattress on there, and you can have a different way of being able to sleep guests, a couple kids, or frankly, even a couple adults could fit right here. And if those slide out big drawers in this thing, I'm going to call this a Swiss Army Super Sofa. I just, I like alliteration. I like all those S's. You've got bonus storage under the rear seating bench as well. You can simply pull that heavy duty decking out of the way, which is supporting us if we're sitting down there, or the kids are bouncing around or whatnot. You can keep uh, extra bedding and stuff down there. Now, you might notice something too. If we peek down here, there is a hidden power outlet and you see that little pocket right there, that little recessed area. That is there so that if you do have uh, an airbed, which is included with this sofa, by the way, you have a place to put the uh, motor and plug it in so that you don't have to have an extension cord snaked all the way around your, well, Swiss Army Super Sofa. So we've looked at the sofa in depth. I've given it my own goofy, stupid nerd name. But if you note know the entertainment, it is really at just the perfect position for this floor plan because it's on an angled wall it organically faces the entire seating area, including the two wall-hugging recliners that are located where I'm standing currently. There's no bad seat in this house. Everything is very entertainment focused, but what's kind of nice is your campsite cook doesn't really get left out. We're gonna talk more about that in just a minute. Normally, I would keep working backwards on the RV, but this floor plan, I think it's better. We're gonna do it room by room. So let's finish up the kitchen and living area. Uh, we've got that handy shelf right there, so if you want to add things like a Blu-ray player or a satellite brain, there's a nice little spot to do it. We've got Bluetooth and DVD and sound bars and all kinds of stuff that's pretty common stock, but below that we have our electric space heating fireplace, which is nice so that you don't have to burn up your propane to get some extra heat into the RV. One of the more recent changes on this floor plan is that instead of having 
a floor to ceiling pantry cabinet right here. We have an upper pantry cabinet, but they created a little Keurig corner. It's a nice little coffee maker corner. And wouldn't you know it, they have the devil in the details on this one. They put a household set of power outlets right there, right where you need one. So again, if it's satellite, it's a Blu-ray, if it's a Keurig, if it's a whatever, you've got a perfect little spot to do it. But they have maintained all those fun little open range storage solutions that make me love this floor plan. And right here next to the stove is one of those. I call it the uh, pop out perfect pantry because I love it when storage comes to you and you don't have to get to the storage. You don't have to get on your hands and knees and go armpit deep to get anything. Now for like big pizza stones or biscuit trays or something, they leave you an open pocket below the stove. And it's kind of funny, I just said don't get on your hands and knees. But remember, big long objects like that, they're very easy to reach. You drop that door, you grab it, you're good. You don't have to crawl all over the floor to get to it. And you might notice that's a little bit larger oven. It's a bigger 22 inch oven versus a more common 16. So it's very functional, you can actually use it. We talked about that pantry space, but I wanted to show you how deep it is. I could say it's just as deep as that counter is deep, but for some reason people have a hard time really picturing and understanding that. So I thought, hey, why not open it? You have the ability to outfit this with an optional uh, convection microwave oven, which is typically what we do on our open ranges here at Halet RV. We have also outfitted this one with the uh, better larger 18 cubic foot gas and electric refrigerator freezer. This is actually made for traveling use. If you lose power, it has an automatic changeover. So even if you are a park camper, you will appreciate the sort of peace of mind that you get with this, knowing that you're not going to lose all of your food here. But we also have this island. Now you might have noticed even the little entertainment countertop areas here and shelves in the coffee corner, they're all a solid surface material. You'll see that repeated in that little alcove below the microwave, which by the way, you notice how that stove top is kind of flush mount. There's also a little power outlet there uh, back in that corner. So again, we have easy reach appliance outlets. This is a very appliance friendly kitchen. And uh, where you'll see that repeated is also there's outlets right on the island here that are easy to reach. But look at the size of the countertop on that island. Since this has a wider body, they could kind of give you a little bit bigger island. And then the little details, like I like how they didn't just make it flat. They gave it that radius and curvature right there. We have a stainless recessed farm sink, which is one of those giant one basin sinks. And you can see how we have uh, bamboo uh, cutting board style cover, as well as a uh, roll away drying rack style cover. But why talk about it when we can show you, right? So a nice look down there in that big stainless sink. So you can actually get big pots and pans in there. And then down here under the island's edge, know how that stainless sink actually skirts down around? You see that upper panel there? That's not a different accent, that's the front of the sink. So they, every little nook and cranny they possibly could, they gave us space here. And I love that they gave us uh, drawers wherever possible and a dedicated place for a wastebasket. And that is so, so handy when you're doing a lot of family prep. You know, if you're going to utilize one or both of those uh, tables here, if we are going to feed this army of a family that you probably have since you're looking at this big sucker, you are going to appreciate having uh, the uh, you know extra prep space and just the ability to like throw some wrappings away. Now, remember how I said that there's a couple recliners right here. They include a pair of wall-hugging recliners. Again, very entertainment focused. And this is one of the things that I think makes the 427 open range here at Halet RV sing. When floor planes like this were first introduced, and some brands still build them this way, it had maybe like a little bench right here. Well, Open Range does, knows that you didn't buy a big fifth wheel so you could sit on a boat bench like a pontoon. No, 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 you got a nicer, bigger, high-end fifth wheel so you could actually sit down and be comfortable. I call this the Thrones. This is the King and the Queen's Throne right here, you know, as opposed to Game of Thrones, which apparently nobody likes Season 8. Um, you know, but that's probably <laughs> way off topic for a normal RV video. Note that our, uh, even these recliners have seat side breeze windows and just that, that mirror on the wall right there, it helps the whole thing look and feel a little bit bigger, a little more alive, and it might help you keep a little bit better eye on the kiddos. And then right here, we have a nice chunk of storage even over those seats. They just didn't waste a chance for anything here. And those things are deep. Now, you know, those are sitting over the recliners, so you're going to need a couple step stools to get to those, or maybe just step on the chair, which really there's no reason you shouldn't be able to do that. 
Um, but the uh, the fact is, you know, that's not going to be your everyday storage. You're not going to put your, your plates up there. That's going to be odds and ends kind of stuff that you pull out. Maybe some kids' games, you know, on a rainy day. I also, as long as we're right here, want to make note of the fact that we have a coat closet right by the entry door right when you walk in, which is a personal pet peeve of mine. When we start looking at big fifth wheels, when they don't give you a place to hang a coat, I just, I get annoyed. And the control panel is easy to access, but it's hidden away. And one of the fine little detail things they do is they have a, uh, a little light right in here so that as soon as you open the door, the light will kick on automatically. It is very, very handy at night if you're trying to see what you're doing. Like, it's not that you can't grab your phone and you can't turn on the flashlight and flash this thing around. It's the fact that you just don't have to. And before we slide back to that bunk room, I really want to take a note to point out the intense lighting package they have here. For instance, if we take a look in the slide and I take a knee, there are eight full LED bright lights contained right within the slide out. You have four in the main overhead and then four more individually switched lights that are uh, below those overhead cabinets. You can light this thing up like a Christmas tree. Plus, you might note how we have those nicer roll down blackout shades so that if you really want to blot the sun out of this thing and make it a nice private dark experience, you really can. And I don't know how well it's going to translate to camera, but even with a little light bleeding in through that bunk window door and the uh, vent fan kind of skylighting a little bit of extra light inside here, if you really want full privacy and you need it blacked out when you sleep, this floor plan can offer that. One of the reasons is because your main entry door also has its own privacy window shade, which is pretty cool. So jumping back to the bunk room, that's that windowed pass-through door that we saw just a second ago. It's nice that we just have a hard door that closes. There's no curtains or nothing like that. There's also, you might notice that light switch right by the door on the right side right now. Uh, your main cabin lights in here also have their own like one switch lighting, but then there are four lights contained like within that slide right there. Once again, if you want to light this thing up like a Christmas tree, you absolutely can. And what's cool is the way that they have this arranged, it's very good for like uh, daytime space. If it's a rainy day, or let's say that you have adult guests, it's really, this thing could frankly double as a second living room. But when you flip that sofa down, it becomes an extra large lower sleeper. Every window has its own privacy shades. You've got that flip down upper bunk right there in the sleeper position out for maximum sleeping. And just like we saw in the living room, those blackout window shades, you know, they give you full privacy, but the really aggressive lighting package inside here does a bang up job of giving you plenty of visibility without sacrificing privacy. There's also a pair of big dresser drawers below that sofa there. But one of the things I wanted to do was flip that little jackknife sofa up a little bit so you can see how it's fully enclosed. And the reason I wanted to stress that is so if the kids are sitting there snacking, you're not going to have Dorito crumbs getting the kids' socks and underwear dirty before they even have a chance to wear them. That's what the campground's for, you know? Not right next to that. We've got more dresser space. And you know, <laughs> anyone who's had even one kid knows that kids just take up so much space. So when you get something like this, this monster floor to near ceiling, like cabinet dresser combination right here, it is one of the most valuable things any bunkhouse RV could ever, ever have. So this bunk room, what's great, whether it's kids or adults, it'll keep their stuff in their room and not bleeding through the rest of the RV. Quick flip the other direction. So like this is standing at the living room right now, looking toward the back of the RV. This is what you're greeted with there. Again, you got those blackout shades for the windows when you need them. Uh, on the upper left, we have a dedicated fixed bunk. That one will always be there. You could always just use it as a cargo shelf if you want. And then down below, what's kind of cool about this is it gives us a fourth individual sleeping space here but it's also something that you can very easily get out of the way if you need more living area. Now, the main reason it needs to flip up like that is, you know, it would crush that awesome dresser space that we have there when the slide's closed, because behind that wall is your uh, outside kitchen. But what I like here is they spent a little bit more money on this hardware. And I've not seen this done in a lot of other brands, and I really like what they did. You've got these easy little, like these are nice and locked in place, but there's just this little button. You can do it with one hand, flip and lock that down so that this isn't an every night hassle and headache for mom and dad or grandpa and grandma or whoever happens to own this thing. Frankly, the kids can manage this themselves. So when it's time to go to bed, 
it's just easier to get them to bed. But speaking of easier to get to bed, how, uh, how do you get them to the upper bunk? Well, the answer is pretty simply, naturally, <laughs> with a ladder. Now, you might notice it feels like it's a little long for its current position. That's because this ladder is designed to be able to access both of the upper bunks. So if you use the other flip-down overhead bunk, you can uh, keep the ladder kind of hooked on the little uh, lip edge of the bunk over there. And, uh, you know, again, you don't have to throw the kids into bed. Extra cabinet space overhead here because why waste anything? And if you want to, like I said, you could make this something of a second living space right here because it is all set up and ready for entertainment hookups. But one of the interesting things here is whether it's for, you know, kid rainy day entertainment or we've actually had some people purchase this floor plan who were military families that traveled around and full-timed in their RV and they turned this right here into something of a mobile classroom. Just add a couple chairs and you got a perfect little kid's play day space. Nice little spot for Legos, maybe some Play-Doh because that'd be easy to clean right there. All kinds of different things. And hey, wouldn't you know, there's some power hookups right there to be able to power up little goofy toys or whatever. Note again, we're carpetless, we're ventless, super duper kid and pet friendly. And this is a bath and a half model. It gives us a toilet next to all of the sleeping spaces so that nobody ever has to disturb anybody in the evening. Now this, just like our main bathroom that we'll see, porcelain foot flush. We've got uh, a thermal foil countertop here, so it's a sealed edge press membrane material. Um, as we, uh, you, you might notice here too, this is where our, you know, direct entry door for traveling to a bathroom is located. Very handy in that regard. But if I take a knee and look up, this is one of the things that really surprised me on this model, is that it has the same sort of max air vent fan that you find in the master bathroom, um, as well as above the kitchen right here. Considering this is just intended to be pretty much the kids' half bath, I was very, very impressed that they went to that extreme length to give you better fixtures here, where frankly, I don't think a lot of people would even think to look. Speaking of bathrooms, one of the things that's really kind of neat about this floor plan, with its wider body design, they're able to basically use the exact same bathroom arrangement as a lot of fifth wheel toy haulers, and it's one that I personally like. It gives us tons of leg room. We maintain a big shower, but it also has really good storage space. So you can see this, uh, you know, seamless molded fiberglass one piece shower. Obviously, we've got plenty of room to get dressed when we get out of the shower. We've got that seat in the corner to, you know, bathe if we need to. There's no little nooks and crannies where water could potentially slip through. Speaking of which, we have more of that sealed edge countertop type space right here around that sink, you know. Anywhere that there's a countertop in this, it's at least solid surface, uh, if not the sealed edge thermal foil type stuff. But like I said, it's the fact that this one also gives us pretty good storage and a dual entry door. Normally you have to choose, do I get a second entry door to the bedroom or do I get uh, you know, a big shower and storage? This one gives you all of those things. And they give us drawers all the way down to the floor here. And what's kind of cool is like, you know, you've got very limited countertop space. You've got enough room here for some toothbrushes and whatnot. You know, it gets enough of the job done. But if you need more area, you need a place to set down a blow dryer or shave or something, you've got it. Plus, you've got more outlets tucked over there in that corner. With plenty of room, you can actually keep some towels here in the bathroom. So if you forget one, like I tend to, you don't have to do that naked nudist camp strength uh, streak through the RV. So again, we have dual entry doors here so that if we have people sleeping, uh, you know, either on the sofa or anything, it doesn't matter. No one loses any ounce of privacy uh, when it comes to, you know, using the bathroom at night. Now, I want to make a very quick note on this floor plan. King bed availability has bloomed in the RV business in the last couple of seasons, which is great. But this floor plan cannot be upgraded to a king bed. This is queen standard and queen only. There's a reason for it. Long story short, the uh, floor plan, if they tried to make it literally any larger, it could not be classified as an RV any longer. It would exceed square footage allowances. This is literally as big as a RV can get. <laughs> so 
The thing is, though, it still has enough of everything. Gosh, bless it. There's more lights even up inside the slide box there I forgot to turn on. You don't need them because the overhead cabin lighting is great. You got those big side breeze windows pumping in tons of light. Now, you might notice uh, something here, too, is the optional second air conditioner. I told you we'd come back to it eventually, but that was a long time ago and a lot of transitions, wasn't it? This is a very in-depth floor plan, and it requires a lot of segmentation on my videos. Apologies, but... You know, I don't want you to miss anything. This is a really cool one. So we've added the second air conditioner here. This is how we like to build them at Halet RV. When you get it from the factory, because this is always going to be second air ready, but when you get it from the factory, it shares the central ducting with the main AC system. So it will be very, very good at keeping you cool uh, in those hotter summer months. And once again, not an ounce of space has gone to waste. You can see that you can lift up to the bed uh, to get to the storage below. That big blue box, that's that uh, air mattress I was mentioning to you. Now, air mattresses have largely fallen out of favor in the RV business because too many brands were using super crappy cheap air beds. If you notice, Open Range is and has always used the actual aero, uh, air, I always say aero bread every single time, aero bed name brand mattress, the one that doesn't tend to, you know, leak air the very first time you use it. Now, what they've done here in their closet is something I think is very cool. They've added a pair of dresser drawers to the bottom of the closet, and it gives us extra drawer space, which is nice, but it raises the floor of the closet up where it's easier to get to. So, uh, you know, if you're just trying to grab a pair of shoes or something like that, you don't have to go, like, leaning and crawling all over the bed to get to it. Now, we do have a uh, uh, big washer-dryer prep closet over here in the corner. 98% of people are going to just use it as pure storage, though, and storage is always great. Notice that we have extra hanging racks right there, but down below... Part of the pet-friendly nature of the Open Range RV family is the fact that in the uh, bedrooms here, they give us a handy little pet pad for the little four-legged fur person in your life. Now, if you've got a big dog, obviously they're going to struggle to fit there, but the fact is most little dogs are going to get it along uh, just fine. Uh, USB outlets on the side of that dresser, perfect place to keep her phone charged. And should you choose to add a TV up here into the bedroom, you will note that this is angle mounted, so it's not going to be a bedtime neck wrecker, because the last thing you want is to be uncomfortable when you're trying to get comfortable to go to sleep. Consider this. This is wide body, has deeper slides, and yet weighs 13,000 pounds, whereas many conventional body, eight foot body RVs with non-deep slides I've easily seen weigh 14 to 15,000 in a similar, if not identical, layout. So, are they extremely lightweight? No, but they are among the lightest within their class and category. And things like, um, you know, all aluminum constructed walls and floor, uh, you know, plywood use instead of OSB, that stuff saves weight. You know, plywood is less weight than OSB. Higher quality materials also have the benefit of being lighter weight very often. So, there you have it. Now, um, one of the hiccups with being super duper wide and uh, having an extra deep slide is that it could throw your center of gravity off a little bit and it could make this thing a little tipsy pretty easily. And that's why, straight from the factory, they throw JT strong arm braces on here to give you uh, side to side and front to back stabilization. And with like a quick little turn of those T handles, those things crank right down. They lock solid, and this thing will feel like it's on a concrete slab when you get there. And that is that is just a nice thing. And God bless America, do they have a look. I'm telling you, like, you put these things behind, I mean, any vehicle, because they're neutral colors, but like a, a black, white, or silver vehicle that goes right along with this paint package, jeez, oh, Pete, is it just a killer, killer look. Now, the uh, baggage doors are all, uh, you know, slam-latched. And uh, normally they would have magnet holdbacks, but this one does uh, have a gas strut hold up since, you know, it's under the slide here. Now, an interesting little detail to look at here, and I really should have showed you on the other side. I open this, and you're like, a 20-pound propane tank? Are you freaking kidding me? Well, you look over there, and if you look closely, there's two more. They use a triple 20-pound tank system, so you still have 30, or pardon me, 60 pounds of propane. But now you have 20-pound tanks that are lighter weight easier to manage, easier to exchange. And I tell you, if you're trying to grill on a Sunday, or if your furnace dies because you ran out of propane, you're going to be glad you got that 20-pound tank you can swap around. Uh, enclosed, you know, heated, protected docking center in here. Uh, actually, this is another really important detail, guys. Notice dual black tank flushes. Well, this has two black tanks. 
so you need two flushes. It sounds pretty self-explanatory, right? Like, why would somebody waste their time talking about this? You would assume if an RV has a black tank flush and it has a second bathroom, then it would have a second black tank flush. But you would be wrong if you made that assumption, because that is not a normal thing in this business. But once again, the important details, even where you're not looking, is what open range is all about. Now, there's a lot of just misleading, disgusting information about R values and stuff out there. Long story short, open range is and has been zero degree rated for many, many years now. They have, uh, they're, they're like Jayco, they have uh, like essentially one of the very best proven tested data uh, sets on zero degree functionality with, uh, you know, the thermostat set on 70 and uh, the room that they temperature test these set to zero degrees for 24 hours. They're maintaining something like 58 in the underbelly. I mean, it's awesome. It's not just above freezing, it's way above freezing. And, you know, that's because they, they do extra things like in the roof, in the nose, in the slides, you know, they get all the extra stuff done. And they also have a cyclical flowing heat system in the belly. They're not just pumping heat into the enclosed and double insulated belly. I want to stress that it's also insulated, two different ways, but that heat recycles up through and heats the bathroom floor. So you have constant heat flow, which is far, far better than stagnant heat. Now we've got a uh, extended receiver hitch on the back here, and I love that they made it an extended hitch. Let me get right over. You see it's like six, eight inches uh, sticking out right there. Well, what's cool is if you decide you want to add a bike rack to the back of this thing, first of all, because it's a factory installed hitch, it's not going to void your three-year structural warranty. And secondly, the hitch extends out far enough where the handlebars uh, on a bike that's going to bounce around like crazy in transit, they are not going to bash against this beautiful laminated rear wall and cause dings and scars because that's literally the opposite of what you want to have happen to your RV after you take it home and get going on the road. You know, you don't want to get to your destination and be like, oh sweet, we screwed up our fiberglass. And what they did here with the awnings, plural, is I think a significant improvement over the you know original awning setup on the open range 3x427 the 3x had one big awning kind of over the middle of everything and it uh you know it sort of got eaten up a lot by you had steps you had a slide in the middle and it was functional but it lost a lot of space so kind of taking a cue from a toy hauler they said wait a minute what if we just split the awnings i mean we're long enough why don't we have a front picnic awning and then sort of like a rear entertainment awning and it works and it works well and I'm really happy with it now normally I'm more of a fan of having LED lighting at the base of an awning because you can get brighter elements however in a case like this when the awning goes over a slide out I do like it when they are in the awning tube so that you don't lose their function now the other neat thing when they're in the awning tube, if you just kind of bump the awning open or close button, you will rotate that uh, you know awning bar up there and you'll point the lights wherever you want, which uh, I'm not saying is really nice at the end of the day if you've had a couple barley pops and those lights are getting bitey. I'm just saying, it's a, it's a thing that you can do. So you know, you do with that what you will. Anyway, now back here, uh, notice that right on the face of the slide out, they have a full size, full feature, full function outside kitchen. And actually, it's kind of like an outside kitchen plus uh, because there's some neat things I did here. If you want to mount a big old TV, you can, but notice too that this door can flip up to give you some cabinet access space. Now it kind of freaks some people out that it doesn't flip all the way up, but remember you don't want to potentially smash a TV mounted on there. And remember also, as tall as this is, as open as that gets, it's more than enough. You can still easily reach up in there. Now we're going to hit start with the fact that we've got a real sink with a real drain into a holding tank galvanized rolled steel countertops which are very very weather resistant and they've got a a little different sort of outside cooking situation right here they actually had to do some special uh plumbing and things to make this happen like gas line plumbing but you've got a normal like on the left side two burner top like you have in a lot of outside kitchens but then you have a high output burner on the right so if you do want to boil a pot of something like corn or whatever you can Extra little drawer here for your, your uh, utensils is always kind of handy. And the larger outside kitchen fridge is always a welcome sight. Now, right next to that, just like old 427, new 427 still has that half bath. And what's cool is it's a dual entry. You can get to it from outside or you can get to it straight from the rear bunk room. So at night, 
everybody has a toilet next to them. And remember that we do have uh, a deadbolt for this. So I'm not going to beat this, uh, this thing to death because we already kind of saw it inside. Now back here, a couple things to point out. I uh, already mentioned the strong arm stabilizers up front, but notice that we have them on the rear jacks as well. We still have uh, bigger 16 inch radial tires. These are running on Dexter axles with Dexter's uh, shock dampening suspension system. Um, you hear a lot about More Ride, you hear a lot about Equiflex. The Dexter system is just as good, if not better, than anything else. It's just more expensive. It's kind of like Moride. It's more of a, a, a premium component. Um, I, I'm not bashing any other brand out there. It's just that you, Dexter's a name that's legendary. But you talk to anybody, you're like, yeah, you know, they're not cheap, but man, they're as close to bulletproof as anything can get. We've got the uh, uh, you know adjustable foot solid step system going on here on the main entry door. And one of the things I like about this version of it is that it has a taller top platform. So when you do need to stand there to juggle keys, you just you feel like you got a little more going on. Plus, it kind of kind of just works like an extra little seat on your campsite, you know. Now this is a uh, anti-slam door, so it doesn't uh, need a hold back. They just put a little bumper here so it doesn't smash into anything. And notice that it doesn't slam into anything either, which is a welcome factor. Now you already saw the outside kitchen, but it still has an outside grill hook up here, if you are so inclined. Uh, we've got the double slam latches, double magnet catches, so that uh, on a gusty windy day that doesn't drop down and hit your head, because that's not what you're looking for, especially considering this is a thicker baggage door that's nice and heavy and fully laminated. You want it to stay right where it's at, and thankfully it's going to. Now down here, notice, no carpeting. They put no carpeting in the pass-through storage of their open range products, and that is something that I really like on these big fifth wheels. And it's not a drop frame, but I don't think you need it. Um, drop frames look terribly impressive. They're big, they're tall, they look neat, they look fun. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, you don't tend to stack cargo up vertically until you've already set every ounce of cargo you can uh, along the bottom layer. You know, you don't tend to stack vertically because cargo can shift and fall. Now notice how we have a little access panel here for things like uh, if you want to run some outside TV wiring from your hookups up there, you run them right through the skirt because this is fully skirted, which is part of that insulation bundle that we've talked about. Um, other neat little details, they don't use plastic screw trim on their open range products. They, uh, on anything laminated anyway, the, uh, they use this formed aluminum material right here, and it's more res- What is- oh, the guy's got- hey, Jody, you're bumping the stereo next to me, bud. <laughs> All of a sudden, this thing started chirping at me as our quality control guy inside is bumping the buttons, and I'm like, is that my camera? Is that my phone? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's early. I've not been sleeping. I've been working late. And it's not that funny, but I'm slap happy. Anyway, so, what's it getting at? Oh, this is more resistant to heat expansion and contraction, and a simple little side mount solar prep there for you. Um, all LED tail and marker lights. Uh, the awnings are adjustable tilt. That being said, they're very high, so you're probably not going to be able to reach them to do that without a ladder. But the good news is you don't need to, because they have an auto rain dump feature as well. I like to get up here on the roofs of these open ranges for a couple reasons. Um, it's just by happenstance, we still have the awnings open, and I like the gradient fade that you have going on here. It just kind of, I don't know, just sort of blends right in with everything. I think that's well done. Not that you're really going to see it from ground level. But anyway, more to the point. There's a couple key things you don't maybe realize up here on the roofs of these open ranges. First of all, they use a very different roof skin from <laughs> basically almost every other manufacturer it's not 100 percent exclusive but they are they are in that like one percent of rv production that doesn't use a rubberized or uh tpo roof membrane this is a uh like a, a pliable pvc based membrane and it's got a couple key qualities to it uh first of all it has a 15 year membrane warranty notice i specify the word membrane warranty i did not say this has a 15 year roof warranty and then stop speaking because if uh <coughs> you're shopping around any of these other brands any camper any place this is just this is just cautionary advice guys if you're shopping around and they say that this camper that you're about to buy from X dealership has a 10 to 12 year roof warranty and then they stop speaking you need to get away from them because they're willing to mislead you to get your money because the membrane itself might, but under specific circumstances, with specific care, with specific maintenance. Um, and that doesn't mean 
you have maintenance free seals. So there's always things you have to take care of there. Now, in the case of this open range, as opposed to a 10 or 12 year membrane warranty, again, we have a 15 year membrane warranty. So it is superior in that regard. And it also, the membrane of this being different, requires no special care or maintenance, no conditioning. You know, uh, you can just give this thing an easy hose bath. It has superior UV reflectivity, which means it's gonna keep the sun off. It, it doesn't chalk. It doesn't promote the growth of black algae, which means you're not going to have black streaks as at nearly as bad down the, the size of this beautiful white sidewalls here. So that's a really important thing I like to point out here. Now, additionally, um, re remember this has two airs on it. That second air there is an optional piece of equipment, but I just want to you know reiterate that real quick since we're staring at it. But additionally, when I talk about the Jayco RVs here that we carry at Halet RV, I talk all about their Magnum Truss roof system. It's awesome. It, it's fantastic. It's got like this J flight next to us. It's like a 4,800 pounder, 4,200 pounder, some 4,000 pound plus load rating. And it's a best in class feature. And that's great. Well, Open Range doesn't really talk about it, but they basically have the exact same thing. Even uh, the same 3 8 plywood roof decking on top of a, a nearly identical truss system. So there's uh, a lot of similarities there that uh, I think are, are really good for people to know because Jayco's a name that you've heard a hundred times and maybe you've heard of Open Range or Highland Ridge but you haven't really heard anything specific about them because they're just not quite as, like they're a little more choosy with their dealers. Um, you know, they're kind of specific on who they let carry their products and we, you know, it's one of the things that we like here at Halet RV is it's kind of a feather in our cap. Brands like Open Range, like Winnebago, they like to work with us here because we do a good job of educating the customer on more than just the boring everyday surface stuff. And that's why we put these videos together, guys, because I'm aware that this is not the least expensive thing you could purchase today. <laughs> not by a long shot. But I'm also aware through personal experience, it is a lot of fun going RVing. And some of my favorite memories as a kid where when we were boondocking in a uh, little 20-foot camper, and I think I was probably sleeping on a little dinette, and my parents wouldn't let me turn on the lights to eat my cereal because we didn't have enough battery power left. You know, I just I remember stuff like that. It was fun. But we were out there. We were together. We were bonding. We were building memories in a big bunkhouse like this. I think you're going to find the exact same thing. So give us a call, guys. You know, we've answered a lot of questions already, likely, but... Uh, we're happy to answer a few more. And whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between with the exception of hidden dealer fees, because we don't do those. We do it all at Halet RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.